I'm gonna tell you a little secret about one of my earliest experiences with time. When I was like, oh, for embarrassment's sake, let's say five, I didn't know the difference between a quarter past an hour and 25 minutes past. Cause you know, in my mind, 25 was a quarter. And of course I thought the second hand really should have been called the third hand cause, I mean, think about it. But make no mistake, here at the Henry Ford, the precision of clock mechanics is second to none. People have been trying to keep track of time for eons, and they started by using naturally occurring phenomena. You got dawn, you got sunset, and presumably at some point you figure out the sun's high in the sky and that's midway between the two. And shadows, shadow clocks, sundials, flowing water, flowing sand, you know, hourglasses, there have been many ways that have been devised. But when did precise technical innovation begin to break down each day into its hours, minutes, and seconds? The Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation's head curator, Mark Gruther, met me at the perfect spot to give me the answer. When did technology start keeping time for man? It starts quite a ways back, Middle Ages. What were those clocks like? They were mechanical clocks. They were kind of like what we could find if we had the time to go up there. Oh. Well, I think we do. Let's do it. Okay. The Henry Ford's clock tower was erected in 1929, and its clock has been running continuously ever since. Oh, holy cow, great, look at this. Check it out. You wanna look inside? What? Yes. Jeez. Oh, well, rather sedate, rather graceful. It's not just beautiful, every part matters. It's the result of essentially centuries of refinement, sort of understanding different mechanical actuations. And that is rather the history of clockwork. There's many, many refinements that were made to different movements and over time they aggregate into something uh, quite beautiful and very reliable. Were the first clocks in towers? I think it's fair to say that the first mechanical clocks were, yes. And that's how people knew what time it was. Typically, they were in towers often associated with, say, monasteries, where there's a, a need to mark off intervals during the day with bells. So there's a close association between towers, clocks, bells, and monasteries. Well, I don't know if you can answer this, but at what point did people say, you know what, I want a clock in my home? If what you're thinking of is more like a mantle clock, something that could fit in a more modest room, you're talking 18th century, sort of middle of the 18th century, 1750s. And so the big challenge, I'm guessing, was miniaturizing. Exactly. This actually is quite small compared to those early, uh, earliest clocks. But yeah, sort of driving it down and finding a way of getting it in a smaller case. And then the next step, of course, was going from the kind of clock you'd have on your mantle at home to the kind of clock you'd have on your wrist. On your wrist. Where the practicality of that comes to, to, to the fore is in the early 20th century. Unfortunately with warfare, so it's, uh, it's people in trenches, it's people in airplanes who need to know the time. But obviously you're not going to carry a, a large timepiece with you, so that's when you start getting pocket watches actually transferred to wrists and you start seeing those shrink as well. This is about a minute off from this. I'm going to go with this one. I'd go with this one, definitely. <laughs> As they say, timing is everything. The clock's mechanism wound up and rang the lunch bell high above us in the tower. The clock's stomach is growling and so is mine. Well, I, I will admit mine is as well, so we should adjourn, I think.